What is up guys? Welcome back to another Man vs. Deer video. In today's video, we're talking all about a terrain feature called an inside corner. We're going to talk about what it is, how to find it, how deer use it, and how to hunt it. Let's jump into it. This is probably one of my bigger bucks to date. Guys, I cannot believe that that actually worked. It was hot, it was really hot. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe, make sure you like the video, and if you have any questions by the end, make sure you drop them in the comments below. This video is another installment in the terrain series where I break down the most common terrain features you're going to encounter while you're hunting whitetail deer and we deep dive into them, what they look like on a topographical map, how deer use them, and then how to hunt them. And I do that on a feature by feature basis, so there's probably 10 different videos in the series, make sure you check them out. If you are new to terrain entirely and you don't know uh, the lingo, you don't know what the features are, how to find them on a topographical map, I highly recommend checking out the video at the start of the series, which I'm gonna link here. It gives you a broad overview of each feature, kind of a definition, and then what they look like on a topographical map. So start there if you're unfamiliar with any of this. All right, guys, so the topic of today's video is an inside corner. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what that is. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how deer use them, and then at the end of the video, we're gonna cover how to hunt this terrain feature. An inside corner is basically the corner of a field that you've identified has some heavy trail usage, and if you take the corner of the field and you jump inside the woods anywhere from 20 to 50 yards and there is a heavily used trail in there, that's going to be an inside corner. Deer utilize these inside corners to be able to get from point A to point B without having to cross a wide open field because obviously that's not the safest thing in the world for a deer to be doing. And especially in mature deer, they're just not going to do that. They're not going to take that risk. So it's basically a trail that skirts wide open terrain and allows them to get from point A to point B safely. Uh, inside corners are actually a form of a pinch point or a funnel because deer want to go through an area, but they only feel safe going through a small portion of that area. It effectively funnels what what mature deer anyways are going to move through that area down to a relatively small point, which is good for us hunters and that's how deer kind of use those. Now when we talk about hunting scenarios for inside corners, and this is going to be a short and sweet video, um, you're going to want to scout it heavily first. You're going to want to look at every corner of the field. You're going to want to look for trails that skirt these corners. And obviously, you know, if there's no sign there, you're not going to want to set up there. But just for uh, example, I'm going to throw an example of this up on the topographical map here. Uh, for an example, let's say we've scouted this field and we can tell through scouting that this corner and this corner have significant trail usage uh, and are definitely getting utilized. Uh, with inside corners, you, a deer is not going to use that trail very often unless it's on the downwind side. The reason for that is they want the wind blowing from that field to that trail to be able to smell any danger that might be in the field, to be able to smell any other deer that might be out there, for bucks to be able to smell does that are in estrus. It just allows them to have a snapshot of what is in that field as they're skirting it. To one, know if they need to go there, and two, know if there's any danger. So you've identified these two areas as having uh, trails that wrap around those inside corners. You now know that you need specific winds to hunt those. So let's look at the first trail that you've identified. So through your scouting, you've identified that there's a heavily used trail here. You are going to need a wind that goes this way to put that uh, trail downwind of the field. If you've got a trail going this way and a wind going that way, you are then going to want to set your stand about here. That puts you downwind of the trail that the deer are going to be using, so they're not going to smell you, but close enough that you can still put an arrow into that deer as long as you're 20 or 30 yards away from that trail. On the flip side, let's say the other corner that you scouted has a trail that runs this way. You know that you're going to need a wind that blows this way. Same exact thing. You're going to put your stand downwind of that trail, but still close enough that you can shoot to it. And that's basically how you hunt inside corners. You scout them, you find where the heavily used trails are, and then you know that deer are going to use those trails to skirt those fields and you set your stand downwind accordingly. These can be super, super hot spots during the rut because bucks are going to cruise the edges of these fields looking for does. Um, 
If you've got a food source or bedding nearby, they can also be great travel routes for deer to go to and from food. Uh, but the, the good thing about these is, is they funnel deer movement down. If you've got a deer that's moving through that area and it's a mature deer, oftentimes it's going to utilize that trail. And if you've got a wind that works for that stand location, these spots can be dynamic. So that pretty much brings us to the end of the video, guys. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. I do a lot of self-filmed DIY-style mobile hunting. I do a lot of cooking videos, and then I uh, a lot of times delve into the tactical side of hunting like these videos here. So consider subscribing. Uh, make sure you like the video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Make sure that you check out the other videos in the train series, and I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you in the next one.